Call to order, City of Trinidad Planning, Zoning, and Various Commission, regular session, June 14, 2022, City Hall Chambers. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Armijo? Present. Coker? Moderana? Here. Norris? Here. Spain? Rollo? Here. Leone? Here. Public comments? <clears throat> no public comments. Is this the time for me to get up and say no. 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 No public comments. Right. Approval of minutes of May 10th, 2022 meeting. I'm assuming everybody read their minutes for the May 10th meeting. I'll move. If there are any additions or corrections, I'll move for a motion. I'll move the motion. Motion been made. Second? Second. Second. Roll call. Armijo? Yes. Moderano? Yes. Norris? Yes. Rollo? Yes. And Leone? Yes. New business. Public hearing. Staff. Uh, this is uh, this application has been submitted by Tom Wilzinski, uh, owner of Trinidad Gardens, four twenty two North Commercial Street, who proposed to paint a mural on the south side face, uh, facing wall of the building. The mural the mural materials would include exterior latex. Acrylic paint, the approximate measurements of the proposed mural design will be 75 by 20. Uh, murals may not occupy more than 50% of the building uh, facade of 200 square feet, uh, whichever is less. The building facade is uh, 3,230 square feet, therefore 200 square feet is the maximum size the mural could be. The applicant is asking for a variance to expand the coverage of the mural on the entire south side of the unpainted portion of the building. The expanded design interior is to make it look um, like a, a panoramic uh, composi composition. The mural was designed by artist Dan Levinson. The artist would like to um, integrate large scale of design into the public view uh, with sensitivity of the histor history of the city, uh, the prominent color scheme of the building will be considered as the artist would like to integrate the large scale of the design of the mural into the public view by telling the agricultural history of the area through a wider window with natural sky, earth tones, um, see a mock-up image for more information on the color style and subject matter of the proposed design. Person responsible for the commissioning, the mural, and the contact for maintenance uh, request is Melinda Kattinger, artist Dan Levinson. A request to reserve the rights of notification of graffiti or damage uh, to the mural and to determine the best approach to restore the maintenance. Um, any damage by this case, by a case by case um, basis. Good evening, everybody. Um, Open the hearing. Yes. Open the hearing. Okay. okay. Cool. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> um, if you haven't, may I give everyone a copy of the mural? This is what we had given to the historic uh, society. And you're welcome. This is going to give you an idea. Okay. I had a review of it in Thank color uh -huh. uh, versus that. But, uh, as you can see, I, I'd like to point out, uh, I'm Tom Wolzinski, I'm the owner of the building, and uh, uh, we are the owners of the uh, dispensary there, the building next to Toyota, and most of you know it, m and it's, uh, it's quite a colorful building in the historic district, it's green and blue. And um, we, we purchased the business from the Michaelenses about a year ago. Uh, we're from Fort Collins, uh, Greeley area, and uh, we've been here about a year now with the business and uh, uh, as part of purchasing the building 
uh, we were thinking, how can we do something for the town of Garden City who's been gracious enough to allow us to come in and do business in their city? And uh, one of the things is um, um, a mural. Uh, something, uh, uh, my wife is Melinda Kaninger. Uh, she has been working with the, the arts community and a few of the local artists, one local artist, who has designed that mural to uh, bring out, um, you know, a depiction and, and some of the, the awesome things and heritage of Trinidad. And so we came up with that mural. But as you can see on the side of the building, uh, it doesn't quite cover up the cor left-hand corner of the building there. You'll see the blue and green. Uh, on the building. That's the existing color of the building right now, and, and, and that side, it doesn't quite cover it up. So we're here today uh, asking for a variance uh, so that we can at least finish that corner of the building with something more tasteful than uh, a blue and green corner of the building. So um, that's what we're here to do today, is to see if uh, uh, um, the city would be so kind and gracious to allow us to, to at least uh, uh, finish that corner of the building there. And it's not for something outrageous. It's just only because it's the size of the side of the building um, for that. So I hope you would consider, give us consideration in this matter, and, and hopefully we can do this. Uh, Oh, Hi, this is, this is Melinda Gaining here. Can I, can I clarify the request? Yeah. Uh, sorry, kind of my project, I appreciate that so Tom's there to present for us. Um, so the, the request is to expand beyond the 250 square feet, which is um, the picture pictured there. The far left, um, the plan right now was to paint that a color that is going to blend into the front of the building. We have some um, uh, brick paint removal to do. So, um, but as you can see, that mural is quite a bit bigger than the allowed square footage currently. So the specific request is to do it as shown. And then the part that is the green and the, the blue that's on that far left will be repainted so that it, it blends into the front of the, of the building of which we are gonna repaint stages two and three of this whole thing is repainting the entire building and removing the paint from that brick. So just to clarify that. Okay. Anybody else on the internet that wants to talk in reference to this variance? <coughs> no. Okay, questions? Commissioners? This mural is going to face Toyota then? Correct. This is Mr. Monroe, anything else? No, I, I, it looks great. It's John? Mural. I have nothing, actually. Mr. Norris? I applaud it entirely. I mean, because you that is the vista now from sitting in the food court when they open up those blinds. I mean, now, instead of looking at a car a lot, you're going to look at a mural. So, yeah. Mrs. Roller? No, I... I have one question. Yes. Has Mr. Tomino been notified? Uh, he's in the process of being notified, yes. You want to have proper notification. Yeah. Yeah, we've been, we've been, uh, uh, that is being handled uh, through, I think, um, at the historic meeting, the historic preservation meeting, they said that they will contact him. Uh, and actually, we did uh, have a, uh, a copy, what you have in front of you, uh, hand delivered to him. So, uh. I don't know if it was a uh, requirement of approval for him, from him, but um, um, it's always good to be good neighbors. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and and that's why we wanted to let them know. Uh, certainly, uh, we would hope that they would not be opposed, as it does make it more uh, a better scene to look at, other than uh, a blank wall, you know, for them. But uh, and I would assume there would be care taken when you're putting the paint on. Absolutely, as far as his parking lot yes. there, because I know it's really, really close there. Yeah, but we, there is still plenty of room. My no, I understand that, but still, yeah, right. 
is still that's my we have plenty of room to maneuver and everything. And one thing I did want to mention out that Victor read in the beginning that uh, we are putting in acrylic paint for the first ten feet of the mural that is uh, that will that for any graffiti so that we can clean up the building. It's, so we're taking measures up front for that. In the event that that happens, we would hope that that wouldn't happen. Um, Historic Society only requested one change, and that's to add a uh, hummingbird and a flower, which, <laughs> of which we will be doing. So we love hummingbirds and flowers here. So there's an alley right there in between you and then and, and the Toyota place. No, there's no, not. That's the other side, Tony. That's, that's uh, the other side. That's the other side. Xfinity, <coughs> between us and Xfinity building, there's an alley right there on the, uh, I believe that's the Was there a railroad that went through there? Or? Years ago, but it was vacated. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you've presented enough to us. Uh, you can sit down. Staff input? No. Well, Staff input. Good. Anyone here to present anything for or against this application or against this variance? Not seeing any? Close the hearing. Commissioners, um, I think we should go ahead. Make a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Mr. Monterano. Roll call. Romeo. Yes. Monterano. Yes. Norris. Yes. Rollo. Yes. Leon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You got a good much. picture here. Thank you. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, subdivision, final plat, Los Angeles County, South Central Council of Governments, and Trinidad Area House Association. Consideration of a subdivision and planned community around Monson Rapid Hospital and adjacent parcels. Staff. Good evening, um, Chairman Leone and members of the commission. So the hospital has submitted a final plat for the hospital property. It, it includes the um, Todd property as well as the health department's property. Um, when the hospital did their expansion, remodel, renovations. Um, it, it really did become necessary for them to replant the property, clear up property lines, um, clear up roadways and what have you. And so this is just a step, um, it's the final step in getting us to where we need to be with the property. Overall, they the plat um, appears to be complete. Accompanying with the plat, they've also submitted a zone change application. Um, so well, we can consider that separately, but the plat, the plat meets the requirements of the city and it would be staff's recommendation to forward a uh, recommendation to the city council that the final plat be approved. Anybody here to speak for this particular variance application? Sure. Come forward. Yes. My name is Calvin Carey. I'm from the, I represent the hospital. Um, this is something that we do need and greatly appreciate the staff's help in getting us put together. So uh, this would be something that we would really need to finish uh, getting in compliance with uh, the rules that you guys have brought forward. So we're, we're happy to do it. Just got to get it done. Anything you, you want to add? Of course. No, no Anything sir. Anything that you'd like to add? No, sir. Other than what's presented by staff? No, ma'am. No, sir. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Do you want to come up? Um, if you have, might have to ask questions. No, I, I read everything and don't. Mr. Norris, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Same, pretty straightforward. Mr. Monterano? No, I, I don't have any questions. John? No, sir. No questions. No questions? Excellent. The staff did a wonderful job then. <laughs> <laughs> any more staff input? No. Anyone here to present anything for or against this particular application? Come forward. Um, I saw this come up. Uh, I'm Robert Arkell. Uh, I saw this come up in the Chronicle News 
uh, as a legal notice. And uh, when I called 943, I ended up visiting with uh, Chris Hall, and she suggested that I come and visit with you. Um, what she told me on the telephone, this is about a week or two ago, is that this was to close the book on uh, the renovation of the hospital. Um, in my humble opinion, I don't think the book should be closed on the renovation of the hospital, and I don't think that they should just uh, come up with a final plat for the hospital property up there and let it go. What you should do long term is come up with a plan for expanding what uh, is there now and uh, making it more appropriate for uh, the community in which we all live. Um, the, uh, as I understand it, the renovation of the hospital cost $32 million and it was fun funded, funded by uh, the Department of Agriculture in 2017. And that is to the degree that it came out in the newspaper. What the background is on that, I have no idea. Um, what, uh, during the same period, uh, I turned 65 in 2012. Um, I had knee replacement in 2014. Um, I have I have a layman's understanding of um, uh, long-term care, nursing home care, uh, what's available in the Trinidad area, uh, what's available in the state of Colorado, and um, also over the uh, I've been in Trinidad for the past. 40 years, almost every night we were born here. Frank and I were both born here. Uh, the, and we've had a front row seat for um, the way the hospital property has developed over the past 120 to 130 years. And it seems to me that uh, long term what uh, Mr. Bashore and his son and grandchildren, and then Dr. Donnelly, uh, Dr. Biber, uh, Shaker Azar, and the rest of them, uh, Sally and Maurice Wyatt, they all had the long-term uh, view of health care in Los Angeles County. And uh, due to the long-standing con uh, dis personal disagreements between all these people, um, the hospital grounds and uh, physical plant up there have maybe have not been developed as well as they could have because the planning was poor. And since this is Trinidad's uh, planning commission for the city of Trinidad, what you ought to do as a group instead of closing this project out and just letting it pass is you should bring, uh, you should, uh, what I think you should do, uh, Los Angeles County Commissioners, City Council for the City of Trinidad, the Trinidad Area Health Association Board, and the Mount San Rafael Board should all come together and form a new corporation to develop the physical property uh, that the hospital is sitting on as Dr. Bashore back in the late 19th, 20th century originally had in mind and turn that into senior housing. And the reason I'm suggesting that all, uh, uh, all you would have to do is take your $32 million loan that you've already used and turn it into a $3 million uh, loan to build 10 units of s senior housing near the hospital um, where you could rotate them on a regular basis as people uh, needed them, you could build more. And uh, as they passed away, 
uh, you could reread them again. Uh, the reason you, uh, I looked at doing this in the late 1990s, early 2000s, up where Dr. Gould was, um, uh, presently it's Gary Terry surveying, and um, it just didn't work, the numbers didn't work because th this is a project that needs institutional responsibility over a long pe period of time. Um, as an individual person, you can't do it because you're not going to live that long. Uh, you, you're not going to live long enough to make, uh, uh, to deal with 10, 20, 30 people in their final years of life. And um, that's why it has to be more or less uh, government uh, or quasi government group that would do it. And um, in this particular case, where you have this John Tucker, who's both. Uh, uh, head of the Golf Association and head of the hospital at the same time. He has decision-making capabilities that in Trinidad's history, very few people have been had, have had uh, that kind of decision-making ca capability in one person. That just is unheard of in the Trinidad area. And so this would be a golden opportunity to create something going forward. Uh, the other part of this problem, uh, Frank may know this as well as I do, uh, be, because he's taking care of more than one elderly person. Uh, there is a, um, when you're doing elder care. Commissioner Paco, uh, I want you to get to the point. And I'm going to give you another two or three minutes. Good. Uh, well, uh, that is the point. Uh, the, the point is that um, uh, we need to, uh, as people are living longer, uh, they can live independently longer if they have uh, their physical residence maintained for them at least on the outside. You, you can get long-term care to take care of uh, independent living inside the house, but long-term care does not take care of the grounds maintenance. Um, what, if the hospital um, built units itself and then maintained the grounds, uh, people could live many years longer independently without having to go to a nursing home or some other institution. And so that's why, that's what I'm proposing here, is that you look into long-term planning for long-term care so that you can expand uh, lifetime. That's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else to speak for or against this particular application? Well, that's all right. If not, I'll close the hearing. Commissioners? Um, I um, actually I agree with a lot of things that he said. I don't. Um, uh, and those are things that we need to think about it as a city in terms of planning and such. In terms of this particular um, motion in front of the board, I think that this is basically cleaning up ends. It's not really the end, it's just formalizing um, the, the, the lines and what's ex already there existingly. It's not precluding any more improvement, correct? That, that exactly, in fact, just as you said, it cleans up the lines and it puts us in a better position to, to move forward on suggestions like this. And it's not only cleaning up the lines, but also the zoning. Right, so, oh, right. right. Well, I mean, that's right. It was right. zoned low density and now they're putting the correct zoning with the correct parcels. Yep. So. Mr. Myron? I don't have any. I agree with Mr. Morris. 
I also agree. Can I ask one question historically? Sorry. They, they said in the 1800s that the zoning, somewhere in our literature, it said in, in the 1800s they were in favor of putting, making that low density residential, and I'm wondering why or how? <laughs> I can answer that. How do we know that? But is anybody <clears throat> just historical? So I'm sorry. sorry. Um, Gary Terry, sir here. Um, that was originally designed in lots and blocks, just like. You want to say your name? Had. Permission horse. What? Present your name. I did. Oh, sorry. Gary Terry. Okay. Severe. That was originally lots and blocks, just like the rest of Trinidad. They come in and built a hospital on part of it. Twenty years ago, they decided they needed to rezone it to put in the clinic. You have the um, cog building there. You have the old building with Dr. Fabric's old building there, um, for future development. So they made each lot. That's what each of those lots are on there for that. So that's why it was low density residential. It was never changed. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys, for, for humoring me. Anything else, Mr. Mm -hmm. No, I'm done. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Commissioners? Motion. Motion? I'll move that we go ahead and approve it. I'll second. 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 Second by John. Roll call. Hermio? Yes. Moderano? Yes. Norris? Yes. Rollo? Yes. Leone? Yes. <clears throat> okay, moving on. <laughs> Sony, Los Angeles County, South Central Council of Governments and Trinidad Area Health Association. Consideration of a zone to conform zone districts of the hospital community south. The hospital's request, um, this one also incorporates COG again and the health department. They're requesting the property be zoned appropriately for its current use. It's currently zoned low density residential. They're proposing that essentially all of the property with the exception of the health department's building be zoned neighborhood services. The health department was interested in zoning their property community commercial. Um, if staff doesn't have um, any real concerns about that, the, pro the lower properties down here will remain open zoning and um, we don't have a whole lot of concerns with respect to that. Again, it'll clean up the use along with the subdivision, the lines, property lines. So um, I would refer council, sorry, the commission back to the criteria for your consideration for rezoning, that um, it was zoned in error. Um, there was an error in establishing the current zoning. That doesn't really make sense. And zoned in error. So the property existed as low density residential when the hospital was built upon it. And so um, it doesn't exist in as its current use. So it would be appropriate to rezone the property. Um, the area for which the rezoning is requested has changed or is changing to such a degree that it is in the public interest to encourage a redevelopment of the area or a new approach to development, which um, we agree with that as well. The proposed rezoning is necessary to provide land for a community-related use, which was not contemplated at the time of development of the comprehensive plan. Our comprehensive plan encourages development where it can adequately serve, can be adequately served by the city infrastructure in a cost-effective manner. So as you know, the hospital has been there a number of years. Um, it does serve our community. It's this um, proposed zone change would be in line with our comprehensive plan. Staff recommends that the planning commission forward a, an approval to city council, a recommendation of approval for the zone change. The reason, the reason for uh, the county is involved because part of that property goes into the county, right? Um, it's the back it's side. The back side of that. The back side of the mm -hmm. clock building is county. Yes, that's county. Right. Yeah. And that's the reason why we have both of them involved in this. Right. Yeah, you're correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions I can answer? Questions for staff? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, anybody else want to go for a question? I guess he left. Huh? Yeah. Oh, he did leave. Maybe on the call. There's a few other people who are um, here from MB5. Maybe perhaps one of them wants to. If anybody wants on the internet wants to come in on this second. What, who's MB5? Public hearing. I'm sorry. Is, is there a question I can answer, or do I um, would oh. you just like to have more information about the zoning request? If there's nothing else, uh, we just want to know if there's anything else that you wanted to present before us, and other than what you well, have, other than what you have in your application. And if there is, you can bring it forward at this time. I think just the intent is to um, have our zoning. Who am I? Who are we speaking to? Across. I'm sorry. This is Tom Horniak from MB5. I'm the owner's rep for MSRH. Okay, so um, I think uh, part of the intent here is to have consistent zoning through the hospital properties. Um, portion of lot four was the medical office building, which was zoned commercial. I'm um, sorry, it was zoned uh, community commercial, with the rest being low density residential. Um, so some consistency just within the, the property for lot four uh, would help with um, permitting and, and things like that. So um, neighborhood services seems to serve uh, the purpose of the hospital more accurately than low density residential. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any staff input? Any more staff input? Anyone here to speak for or against that application? If not, close the hearing. Commissioners, discussion? Well, I, think I think it's a good thing. I think it goes back to what we just did on the previous one. I Mr. Think John? Nope, I agree. Mr. Roll? Mr. Norris? Need a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion. motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Mr. Moderano. Roll call. Ermey Hill? Yes. Moderano? Yes. Norris? Yes. And Leone? Yes. Thank you. Moving on. Reports. The chairman report. Uh, I don't have anything to report, to tell you the truth. Uh, Commissioners, report? I don't have any. Mr. Norris? No. Mr. Roll? I don't know if it goes under this section or not, but I wanted to bring back up the development fees that you guys talked about wanting to uh, reduce. Is that Talking the right about term? reducing development fees. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in favor of that. I'll put on the. I thought I went to City Council already. Did that go to city council already? No, that hasn't gone to city council. So, um, if do, I don't think you have to catch me up. So, did you come up with um, actual numbers, or how did you base the reduction of those fees? Fees pursuant to Tabor, the city charges fees that align with the workload. Um, involved in, in seeing these applications through. And so they're directly tied. It may be appropriate at this point to go ahead and reduce the fees. We're um, not using a consultant as much, so it's not costing as much. We still have staff time involved. So um, if you have, even if it's a percentage reduction that you would want to propose, that would be fine. What I will say is the city has a housing, um, it's a planning assistance grant that we're going to be working through now and part of it is for them to look at our housing needs work through our code look at areas where um, we can improve our code to help expedite our processes reduce fees 
um, anything that would improve the, uh, the housing situation in Trinidad. And then also another component of it is the GIS mapping. So um, if the Planning Commission has a recommendation, I can certainly forward that to whoever that consultant is. What I would venture to say, though, is that consultant will be in front of you specifically to talk about these issues where they see um, areas in the code where it can help with the housing situation. So it might be, I guess it depends on how soon you'd like to see those fees reduced. Uh, what we do you can think? certainly do you know, a number of things. We can just write a memo to, to the city council recommending a percentage decrease on those fees <coughs> to assist with housing at this point. Uh, when possibly come up with a percentage or whatever without seeing what it costs to see it through? Well, I would agree with that. I think that um, it, it needs more analysis than just saying, yeah, they should be reduced. Potentially they should, um, but we need more analysis. We need to do an analysis and see what it really does take for us to process these applications. Some of them are time consuming, very time consuming. Um, I would say it's a little bit more affordable now without a consultant, but that doesn't mean that our staff time isn't taken up even that much more. So, what do you, what is your uh, expected time limit for the planning grant? The grant actually runs the contract period runs through end of September of next year. Oh, um, but that includes the GIS component as well. So I would expect that. Uh, it's going to be later in this calendar year before they even get started really working on it. And they're going to want to look at all aspects, not just the development fees. They'll want to look is, at is there Is there a possibility of trying to do an individual type hardship or uh, somebody wanting to do some kind of housing and can show staff that it's some kind of can we do it individually? Yeah. Well, so along with this grant is also um, implementation of initiatives, and I'm sorry, not initiatives, incentives that the city's been working with um, SCED to come up with. As a matter of fact, city council will be considering um, a resolution and ordinance at the next meeting regarding housing incentives. And so we're working in that direction, certainly. Um, you know, we're, we're taking advantage also of grant funds that we have available to us to make sure that we do an adequate job in all of these changes, though. So we protect this, the needs of the public at the same time. I think maybe we're just a little too much in a hurry, huh? I, I disagree entirely and wholeheartedly. I mean, you can unequivocally argue that planning and zoning um, departments across the nation have been an impediment to development. And, and we are continuing to do that with high fees. We, we refuse to rewrite the code so that people could, could, do, could do things freely, could, could do ADUs. They now have to come to us every time and they have to pay us 1500 bucks for some exorbitant amount. And, and that's wrong. And so, I'm sorry. I, I, I feel strongly that, that you know, we, we talked about reducing fees. We were on board as a commission to reduce fees to, to try to get more people in here to, to, to try to increase some housing. And I think we should stand firm on our ground and, and do that for our, our citizens. I mean, that we're ultimately serving our citizens. And, and they need to be able to develop and, and to, to do things, and we're just stopping them. And I think that's wrong. That's my personal opinion. And that's why I, I suggested that we come up with a way to reduce it. And, and I think it's kind of silly to sit there, and we all know it's going to be on the list. Why not reduce the fee so it's not on the list? Then you've got other things you can address and change that maybe you don't know about. This role, I'm going to continue. Um, that was my main question. It had, been, it had been brought up previously, and then it was just kind of tabled. And I was just curious if there was 
staff recommendation on what fees should be, but now we got your answer. Um, I do kind of agree with John in a way that some of the, like the variance one, for an example, it's high. The, I'll just use the lady that came in at the meeting, a couple meetings ago, she just wanted to put up a carport. Mm -hmm. Should be $700 and have a survey, and all of these things. I feel like there has to be some balance of what's, you know, somebody putting up a carport versus someone wanting to do something more major. I don't know if that's, we should wait on the, I can't remember the name of the company that you said, but the company that's going to be looking at this. Oh, yeah, they're doing housing incentives right now. So um, Does that include variances? It would, in, it would include variances, sure. So, um, ooh, what I can do is perhaps bring it to a city council work session um, and let them know that Planning Commission is interested in seeing the fees reduced. Um, and in the meantime, and maybe not between all the fees, right. some of these fees are very reasonable. Like it's you know twenty five hundred dollars to do a subdivision plot. I think that's pretty reasonable. The only one, me personally, that I see as a big impediment is that seven hundred dollar variance. Variance fees. That's that's just my opinion. But I don't know. I'm coming in late to the game, so I don't know exactly what your conversation was before and what you what your feelings were. Um, I'm happy to certainly share with City Council that feeling and um, do what we can to analyze what our fees are more sooner than later. It doesn't necessarily have to wait. And then I think it would be more appropriate if we had our full commission here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because yeah. there were some good ideas with fees. Uh, from Mr. Spain mm -hmm. and Mr. Coker along with Mr. Norris, all of us, we had all some kind of an input in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that would be a reasonable time is when we had a, well, a full board here to discuss that. Mm -hmm. Along um, with you or person that- Can we put on the, for next meeting to talk about it? I mean, like a workshop style? Mm -hmm. Sure. I want to know why they go to city council already. We were told that that's what was going to happen. I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't know. From what I, remember, I like this question. From what I remember, Mr. Moderano brought it up that we were going to talk about reducing those fees. And I believe that you asked Chris, was it Chris or Chris? To look into. Right. Right? Right. And then was she going to give she it She's supposed to come back to us. That's right. That's right. I look twice. into. Twice? I believe so. Am I right? Is Chris still. What? I'm I believe this happened twice. Yeah. I'm sorry, look into what? Into what was she issue? going to look into? I don't remember that. We talked about this twice, and it was supposed to go to the city council, I believe, twice as far as reducing the fees. Okay. I think she's going to look into what the fees were prior to. Yes, you're right. The consultant right. Right. Prior, yes. prior to what okay. they were when right. they were increased. Okay. And then. I know they were extremely low then. Variances used to be. Let me think this about this for a minute because I used to have to process. They were like fifty dollars, and then we would literally refund the difference between the um, publication costs and and that fifty dollars. So that obviously was, that was extremely low. <laughs> that wasn't paying for staff. I mean, that was no, that was. wasn't paying for anything more than publication right. costs. Right, that was, that was, wasn't um, even paying for staff. Right. So what is the city budget right now? How many million? Off the top of my head, I don't know. This this would be a cost that we could we could shoulder. So yes, but what I would say is also development should pay its own way as well. Yes, we can assist. We're still trying we to can. get we were trying to get ADUs going, and the way to get those going is to allow people to come before us, and and we're not making that happen. So, is this even possible? We have no idea how many people want to leave use because nobody's applied for one in how many years? Well, the ordinance and was passed in um, last 2021, it had ADUs. 
Okay. So it's been just about a year now. So not a single person has applied, and one of the things, one of the barriers is the fees, is what they're saying, what we're thinking. If they can reduce us significantly, even for a period of time maybe, to see how many people show interest, that would give us a better idea if things need to be adjusted, if fees need to be adjusted, if zoning needs to be adjusted. But, I mean, am I wrong? Well, it's, it's right now it's mathematically difficult to build an ADO in a lot of places, yeah. so that's we haven't finished that with that one, but yeah, I mean, the, the cost was something we thought that we could get through because we tried to get through the changing the code and and we ran into several roadblocks several times, so. Can you just bring something before city council yes. regarding what we're talking about, Audra? Yes, I will. And uh, then we can go from there. Yes. I think that would be. I'll draft a memo to city council for their June 27th work session and let them know that Planning Commission is highly interested in seeing the fees reduced where possible to align with staff time right. and encourage housing and other development. Is that all right? Yeah, that's really right. beautiful. I think that's all right with everybody here, right? And then in the meantime, as time allows, if time allows, I'll try to analyze and see actually what it's taking time-wise. And I agree with you. Get ahead of, get ahead of the grant. If we can reduce it now, that's fine. If that person consultant comes back in and says, oh, this is just a little bit too low still, it can still be adjusted up. But I agree. I'm I'm not, I hear what you're saying. What, so. what do you think that consultant would do before us? What would they do? When would they when? be before us? When do you think? I mean, you probably don't have a time limit. What, what would your estimated time be? Well, we're getting ready to advertise for a consultant, so it's going to be probably before the, like around fall. Oh, okay. So, I know it's a little ways out, and I understand that, but again, we're trying to maximize um, what we can accomplish with grant funds, so. Okay. And that's what we have to do as a different city. consultant. Did that answer your question, Mr. Norris? It did, I think. Mrs. I, was, yeah, I really like that. Thank you. Uh, Bring up? Well. I just thought they just hired a housing consultant that okay. just presented. So I was like, wait, okay. is it different? <laughs> that was SCED. That's the one that's developed housing incentives. And so SCED, SCED, South, South, wait, Southern Colorado Economic Development District. Okay. Yep. Um, so that will be the proposal that City Council will consider on the 21st, the resolution and the ordinance that would put those incentives out there. I believe she's actually referring to the consultant that Sky Tolman found. Right. So there was two of them. So the one you're talking about, they talked about at work session last night, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then before that, it was Roost or Root, and they came in. Oh, okay. Said how many housing needs? That was a housing needs assessment. Okay. <laughs> so was that DOLA? No, um, DOLA, yes. One. Housing needs assessment was DOLA. DOLA, mm -hmm. okay, yes. okay. So they came in and did that specific to Trinidad? Yes. Okay. Housing needs assessment. This is housing incentives. Now we're going to do a planning assistance to look at code and GIS. And a housing resolution. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll work on these. <laughs> Sound good? Thank you. And I'm sorry that you're frustrated that this hasn't gone to council. Um, but we'll get it in front of council so that they, they know that that's or your interest lies, I think that's, it's good information for them to know. Thank you, thank you, right. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is, is Chris okay or is she? Yes, she's okay. fine. Okay, okay. Okay. Fine. Don't know how to do these things. She just talked tonight. Okay, I'm sorry. <coughs> I think we went through the chairman's report, tried to have one commissioner's report. I think everybody talked about what they wanted to talk about. I'm good. I move planning director report. I think we just had a planning <laughs> director report. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Did, did, you, did you get an interim job? Um, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I see that. Okay. Nothing else. I move that we adjourn. That motion adjourned. No second. Awesome. Second by Mr. Roll. <laughs> adjourned. Uh, Audra, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. For your, all your input tonight. Well, thank you for your patience with me. No, thank you. Thank you for your input. Victor. This conference is no longer.